Uh, hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another brand new playlist and in this playlist we are going to talk about GraphQL I hope you have seen my first video where I was talking about what is REST API what is GraphQL why should you learn the GraphQL okay so let's get started and I will use my existing techniques to teach like we will talk about some slides some visual diagrams and then we will go to the code and we'll start writing the applications and we will build some APIs using GraphQL. First of all, let's create a baseline. Okay, what is GraphQL? What all it can do? What is the difference between REST and GraphQL? That you can just look around anywhere. What is GraphQL and what is REST? This course is particularly starts with very basics, then advanced, and then I will cover a full stack application with a GraphQL uh, client side can with a React or Vue.js. So here we are talking about GraphQL and uh, when we talk about GraphQL it doesn't mean that GraphQL is a replacement of REST. So if you talk about early 2000 we started with the SOAP based web services where we used to have a visual document web service definition language that was a visual document then we moved to the REST interface after 2003 or 5 we started writing the REST APIs like get, put, post, delete for a particular resource and REST become widely popular. Even if you see the lot of applications, I mean almost most of the applications in the current world is consuming the REST APIs. So using GraphQL you always ask for what you need, not more, not less. In the REST APIs whenever you are hitting a particular endpoint you will get a lot of data but in GraphQL you can specify a particular attributes okay i need only this much data from this particular api okay so graphql is also like json based here we have a different client apps they will have a graphql client and we will also create a graphql server which will talk to your database data source existing rest api legacy applications or something like that right so architecture of graphql is kind of simple and when we talk about data so in the rest we are calling them HTTP methods, right? Get, put, post, delete. Get means receive the data, put, post, delete. It's actually changing the state of resource. Similarly, in, in terms of GraphQL, we divided that into the two terms. I'm talking about terminology here only, not teaching. GraphQL queries and mutations. Queries means we want some data from the server. Mutation means we want to do some kind of a change in the state of a particular entity. So this is how in the rest of the we are making HTTP get using XGOS fetch or node fetch APIs. Here we are going to trigger the queries, queries that look something like this to request the data from the server side. So we will be doing queries, mutations, these are kind of a JSON document we will pass. These are called queries and mutations and server will take the actions on that queries and mutations and give us the data. Here you can actually request a lot of data in a single query instead of like making multiple calls in the REST APIs, okay? So uh, we'll talk about all these things like how GraphQL is like a declarative, uh, GraphQL use this query language, all these things in the next video where we will do the relative comparison of GraphQL with the existing REST. I will not say that GraphQL is a replacement of REST. REST has its own standard on benefits. GraphQL has its own benefits. If you see that your services can be moved or migrated to the GraphQL for, uh, for some future good, then you should. Otherwise, REST is very secure. REST provides uh, all the different kind of cachings and all these things. GraphQL has some challenges related to that. But yes, GraphQL is also pro uh, able to provide the caching, uh, prefetching mechanism. Everything is there.